Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Studio Pro. This video is all about two products which I really like and I highly recommend. Let me begin with the Rodecaster Pro 2. Picked it up a couple weeks ago. It is amazing. Brilliant design, very well thought out. It does so many things. So versatile. An interface, a mixer, a recorder, the zero latency real-time sound processing. I mean, it's so great for production or live streaming, which is, by the way, how I use it. Cannot recommend it enough. I also want to say that this headset model right here with the microphone, totally underrated. Not enough people know about this. Somebody turned me on to these Biodynamic DT797 PVs. I've heard of some other different models, like the Sennheiser HMD 26s. I've known those are out there. But when I heard like how this, this headset sounds, it was like, wait, I've got to try that out. Biodynamic sent this to me. Can't tell you how much I've really enjoyed using it because it just sounds, I and mean, it's a condenser mic, it's got a much better sound than most headset mics. So it's not really out there. Not a lot of people are talking about this model very much, but look it up for yourself. I highly recommend it. It's definitely under the radar right now. Most of the YouTube videos on this model, the PV uh, or the DT797 PVs, they're all in German, so you can't understand what they're saying but you can hear how it sounds, and it is pretty darn impressive. Okay, so this video is all about my custom settings for this headset, this microphone with the Rodecaster Pro 2. But let me also say a couple things here. Everybody's voice and their room is different. How I'll sound in this room is maybe different than how you will sound in your room. Not just your voice, but you have to use an acoustically treated space, right? If you're in a spot where there's a lot of echoes and reverberations, it doesn't matter if you have this headset and the Rodecaster Pro 2. It's just not going to sound the same unless you treat your room. So number one, understand that. Number two, the settings I'll give you, they'll get you pretty close. But again, you might want to fine-tune them for your voice specifically. Okay, right now you've been hearing me entirely on the this uh, signal chain that I've come up with, which I'll share, the custom one in a second. But let me turn off all the processing entirely. So right now you're just hearing this microphone dry and raw and unprocessed at 31 dB. So here's how it sounds straight out of the box right into the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, Rode has come up here with three basic settings for pretty much all microphones. These are generic. They're not specific to any microphone. But here's how neutral sounds. Now, these are all basic settings, meaning there's only three controls here, depth, sparkle, and punch. The depth and the sparkle are up about a little more than 25%. The punch is just below 25%. But here is how... The DT797 PV sounds with these settings. I'll go ahead and turn it off so you can get kind of the A-B comparison. There's a light amount of processing here. And this is, yeah, overall quite neutral. I would have to say that uh, there's not a lot of enhancing done here in terms of this preset. But watch when I turn on Podcast Studio. Okay, this has much more of a bold, robust, uh, resonant sound to it. And you can see here that the depth, the sparkle, and the punch are way turned up. Now, again, these are all basic settings. To me, depth probably means low end. Sparkle probably means mid to high high range on the frequency spectrum. And the way that I hear punch on here, it's a combination, I think, of compression and a little bit of expansion. So it's all the dynamics of, of, of the tonality on there, too. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. But you can hear how it sounds with that on. I'll give you the A-B comparison. Here's how it sounds, again, completely with processing entirely off. Okay. Then we get to the broadcast setting. Do you like, do I need to do the broadcaster's voice when I uh, talk like this? Uh, no, I don't really. Um, but here are the settings for that. And you can see everything is pretty much maxed out. The depth, the sparkle, the punch are all 85%, I would say, or higher. 80% or higher, maybe. But uh, everything is quite turned up here. Watch, I'll turn this off. You can now kind of get the A-B comparison of how it sounds completely unprocessed versus if you're aiming for this broadcast sound. Now, let me just say, you know, compression and EQ are very important in this day and age. I think too many people plug in the mic, start recording, and it sounds like this, which is fine. But maybe this is over-processing your voice. You tell me what you think in the comment section below. I love the way this headset and the mic sounds no matter what, but maybe we're doing a little bit too much to it here, or we're doing it in the wrong places. But also remember, all of these are generic settings to work with pretty much any mic across the board. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the DT797 settings. Now again, 31 dB, 
I've titled my preset as such. So here's how uh, I think it sounds best. And I also want to tell you that over time, like I may go back and alter these settings. I may tweak things. I may I might make adjustments. It's important you know that no setting and no preset I've ever made stays that way forever. Uh, maybe with the the U87 that I use here, the the signal chain on that and the Apollo, that's kind of stayed similar for a couple of years now. But uh, for a long time, it it got changed every couple of weeks and months. Just so you know. Okay, processing here on the high pass filter. I am using it at 61 hertz, 61.5 hertz, and a very shallow slope at 6 dB per octave. De-essing is on, most certainly, for sibilance. See what it's doing there? Every time you hit one of those S's, it takes a dive. And uh, you can see my settings, the threshold at negative 28.8, the ratio at 4.5 to 1, the attack and release relatively quick. There's no makeup gain here. And my frequency is at 5,700 hertz. Now, I'm usually more in the 6,000 to 6,500 hertz range, but this is just where I found it worked the best. Again, these are all things after the fact that you can sibilance, 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 sibilance. I just kind of found that right in there for me on this mic, it works the best. Now, what happens if you turn this threshold up even higher? Whoa, whoa, that's too high. Sibilance doesn't sound good. So let me bring it back to where it was. By the way, I forgot where it was. So all you have to do is go back to your preset and then you will be able to you'll be able to go right back to it. So oops, noise gate. We were guessing 28.8 dB is where it was at, negative 28.8 on the threshold. Um, so you can see those settings right there. Spectacular. I like the fact that the de is working. I know it's working because I can see it. Okay, the noise gate is working. Let's turn this on and off and let's listen closely here. So even for this condenser microphone, it's off entirely right now. Uh, there's a little bit of room noise, a little bit of self noise, a little bit of something, right? Small capsule, so you, you can you can expect that. But um, I've got the range at 5 dB, so by no means is it cranked up. In fact, that's barely a touch of it. That's essentially 25% of what it's capable of. Threshold is negative 43.2 dB. The attack, the hold, the release, you can see those settings. The hysteresis at 0.42. And really what you want to notice is that you know, when I'm not talking, it gets pretty close to zero there. And again, you could crank this uh, this range all the way up here. Watch this. Now we're at 14. But you can kind of hear when I stop talking, it's like the gate kind of shuts after I'm done talking. I don't know if you can hear that. I certainly can in the, these headphones. Okay, turn it back to five. And then we'll move on here to the compressor settings. Uh, negative 22.2 dB on the threshold. 3 to 1 ratio on the... Uh, 3 to 1 on the ratio, I should say. Attack and release are where they are, and I'm using 2.5 dB of makeup gain. Quite honestly, this number I could probably... And again, these are things that you figure out over time. I could kick this up a little bit too. Actually, I'm kind of liking how this sounds with just a little bit more makeup gain. And that's only, what, 0.5 dB, but this is something after the fact. Again... No setting is permanent. No preset is permanent. So you can always revisit that. But for right now, I'll bring it back to 2.5 2.5 dB. Then the equalizer, which I'll turn off for just a second. You can kind of get an idea of how that sounds with the EQ off. And then I'll turn it back on. Uh, the high bell is boosting. I'm boosting a high bell at 1.2 dB at 9300 hertz. Mid bell, I always do this cut at anywhere from 250, 275 to 300. At 272, I'm taking away 2.4 dB. And then I'm boosting 1.7 at 86.2 hertz in terms of the low bell. Then the big bottom and oral exciter. The big bottom is working at 73.3 hertz at a 55% drive. And then I always turn the oral exciter down to the speech fundamental frequencies, like 1,000, 1,500. And then it works upward from there. You can see that it's, it's harmonizing, basically saturating that sound above there at 47%. So not full steam ahead, but... It is just kind of boosting those mid frequencies so that, you know, for voice, like I'm recording here, that it cuts through on a recording. And then panning is off, and then it's literally as simple as that. That's the last setting. It goes back to the very beginning. So that's how all of this sounds. By the way, I highly recommend that you make a preset for every single mic that you use here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. And to do it, right, when you're in these settings, you make the advanced settings. All you have to do is click out of it, 
And it's going to ask you, hey, do you want to save a preset to recall them at a later time? You hit save preset, you title it, and then you get to keep your preset. And again, always have the gain amount with the preset here so that you can remember exactly what to dial in for your voice, your projection, and how it typically sounds. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Again, uh, this headset mic, tremendous. The Biodynamic DT797PVs. Thank you, Bayer, for sending these my way to, uh, to demonstrate here for you. Thumbs up on this video if it provided you some value or some entertainment. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Home Studio Pro, so that I can see you next time.